Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, the person I'm about to bring out uh, has a more uh, difficult to describe job than even I do. I thought internet musician was a hard thing to get across to people. Uh, uh, Nathan Sawaya is a, a brick artist, a Lego artist. And this is a real thing, as he has to frequently explain to people. Uh, as you'll see, he makes a, a beautiful uh, sculptures out of Lego bricks. Uh, he's got uh, an exhibition right now uh, in Times Square. Uh, 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 something happening in Brussels, I think Amsterdam soon. It's crazy town. Uh, I'm very excited to see what is under these sheets because I don't know myself. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Nathan Sawaya. So, uh, my name is Nathan Sawaya. I am an artist who works with Lego. I know what you're thinking. We are on a music and comedy cruise line. What better way to kick it off than a guy building with Lego? Yeah. <laughs> Starting with green. Let's see, one, one, one more, one more green, I think. <laughs> We're gonna go yellow. <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> Nine-year-olds go crazy for this shit. <laughs> no, I thought uh, it best to, to talk about uh, who I am a little bit and kind of explain what I've done over the years. Um, and, you know, yes, I'm an artist that works with Lego, and it all started uh, when I was five years old. Um, these are my parents. <laughs> I thought best for this talk, I would illustrate it with works that I've done over the years. Uh, but my parents were very accommodating. They let me have a 36 square foot Lego city in our living room. That's where I went. That was my respite after school. That's where I spent a lot of time. And growing up, I found Lego was an important part of my life. When I was when I was 10 years old and I wanted to get a dog, I said, Mom, can I get a dog? Like, You're not getting a dog. So what did I do? I tore down my Lego city. I built myself my very own life-size Lego dog. It was kind of boxy. I called it a boxer. But it was one of those moments when I realized, wow, this toy could be anything I can imagine. I, if, if, if I wanted to be a magician that day, I'll build myself a top hat. If I want to be a rock star, I'll build myself a guitar. There were no limits to the toy. It didn't matter what was on the front of the box. Just use your imagination. So I kept exploring it, and, and I, I wanted to be an artist. My parents were always encouraging creativity. Um, and I went to college. <laughs> and after college, what does a young, budding artist do? They go to law school. Oh, yeah. Of course, they go to law school. So I ended up going and practice, uh, studying law at NYU, and I still had some Lego bricks, but it wasn't enough at that point. And I would come home, I actually started practicing corporate law, and I would come home at the end of the day, and I would need to create. You know, some people go to the gym at the end of the day, some people hit the bar. For me, I wanted to create. Sometimes I was painting, sometimes I was drawing, and sometimes I was sculpting. And I would take my Lego bricks from my childhood and challenge myself, can I build large-scale sculptures using Lego bricks? So I would, I would look around the room and I'm like, okay, I, can I build an apple out of Lego? Okay. How about an apple the size of a basketball? All right. What about a pencil that's eight feet tall, all out of Lego bricks? <laughs> And I put a website together, and soon I was actually getting commissions from people all over the world saying, hey, can you build me this? For example, this was a commission. Hey, can you build me the Brooklyn Bridge? Hey, that's no problem. Absolutely. Happy to do it. Can you build me a slot machine? I love slot machines. All right. Happy. Um, hey, I really love ambulances and rabbits. <laughs> Duh. Right there. And I realized there was really something to this. So I was still practicing law, and I would spend all night working on my creative sculptures and all day at the law firm. And it was time when I had to really take a look at myself <laughs> and say, is this really what you want to be doing? And I made the choice to leave the law firm behind. And I opened up an art studio. This is what it looks like these days. I have four million Lego bricks at my disposal and I can just explore my imagination, which is a lot of fun. And 
What has happened is they've taken on different commissions over the years. A lot of museums have reached out. For example, this is in the uh, National Marine Corps Museum in uh, Quantico, Virginia. And they wanted to teach kids about history. But let's do it through something they're familiar with. So I came up with this piece. Uh, here was an example when the New York Public Library wanted to celebrate their 100th anniversary. The New York Public Library has two very famous lions out front, so I replicated them out of Lego. It was pretty exciting because I was taking on all these different commissions from all over. I wasn't really pursuing my own art, but it, just, it still it was a very good time. I mean, now some of the commissions that come in are a little more odd. Um, I've had people ask me to build an urn for their dead chihuahua. Uh, a working air conditioner, <laughs> a life-size nude woman with the head of a cat. <laughs> now, I passed on most of those, but I actually did build one of those three. <laughs> I like cats. <laughs> um, other, uh, once in a while, people will ask me to build something of themselves. So, Conan's new show was coming out, he said, could you do a replica of, of me? And I was happy to try and make that happen. And then once he saw this, he was like, well, can you make me a comic book character? <laughs> that is the famous <coughs> flaming sea. Um, and to give you an idea of scale, that's how big that thing is. It's, it was a lot of fun. And to have Conan standing in my studio for two weeks straight while I worked on that. Was, <laughs> but then, of course, he did this for someone, and then everyone else wants one. working on these commissions and, and being able to pay rent, that was a good feeling, but I wanted to still pursue my own art. So I started working on different projects for myself, and this is what it was a chance to really explore my own emotion. These were various projects where I wanted to take the brick and take it outside of the idea of just a toy and really make it into contemporary art, put some emotion into the art. Because when I first started going to galleries and telling them what I did, they were like, oh, you make Lego art, so cars and trucks? I'm like, oh, no, these are, these are full-size sculptures, there's a lot going on, and it took a while to get that door to open. Um, these are various pieces I've done over the years. Um, you may recognize this one. This one has become pretty iconic. It's a little bit of pop culture. If you were to Google the word yellow, this comes up as one of the first images. It's, it's, it's an interesting piece. In fact, if you live in Brooklyn and you have Hodgman and you happen to go on the subway a lot, you'll see this is often on a bunch of subway posters for the Times Square show. But it's also been used a lot of different places. I've seen it on album covers, on book covers. Uh, there's a DJ in Philadelphia who uses it as his logo. Um, it's been used on a major uh, fashion label. They used it for the back of one of their jackets. Some of this was done with my permission. <laughs> I was a lawyer. <laughs> so it all worked out. <laughs> now after I had collected and amassed a, a group of work on my own, I thought, well, let's, let's put it out there and let's really show it to the people. And I've been able to put together exhibitions. Uh, and that's been really exciting for me. It's been a way to get back and really see kids reacting to art and getting families and kids into art museums that have never been to an art museum in their life. But they become because they're, they come because they're so familiar with this toy. They can connect to the art on a whole new level because it's made out of something they relate to. I know a lot of folks, they can go to a museum and appreciate a marble statue, but if they come home at night, very doubtful they'll have marble they can start chipping away at. But people have Lego bricks, and I often, I often get people contacting me saying, hey, we saw your exhibition, kids came home, they went straight to their bedroom, dug out all their Lego bricks, we haven't heard from them in three days. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, this, is, uh, this is one of my largest pieces. This is a Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton. Hey, uh, this is a piece. This is currently in Times Square. Uh, and it, is, it was something I did actually for the kids. I saw so many kids coming to the exhibition that I really wanted to give back. And I spent an entire summer creating this dinosaur. Because what do kids love? They love dinosaurs. So that was the challenge that summer. Now, uh, a new part of my exhibition has also been to take on some famous works of art and replicate them out of Lego bricks. 
So you take something like Rodin's thinker, let's see it in Lego. And the idea here is to take very famous works of art history and create them life-size, scale one-to-one, -one, out of Lego. Because why go look at these original works of art when you can see it out of brick? Uh, so it's been a fun project, and it's, it's really gotten kids into art. And then uh, one, one thing I've done is take <laughs> is take some of the subject matters out of these two-dimensional paintings and then try and make them 3D, which has been a fun challenge. So you see Whistler's mother, of course, there she is, and now you get to see her stern look on her face. One of the other things I try and do at the end of the exhibition is a place where everyone gets to sign a brick. And it's just my way of giving back, making sure that people are part of the creativity. And uh, so this is in Times Square. People have been adding bricks to this, and they've been signing and signing and signing. And it's been it's been very fun. You see all the signatures. Um, it's been exciting because for me, and this is where I get a little bit serious. For me, art is critical. It is important. It is necessary. I think that art has made me a happier person. Creating art made me happier happier than when I was a lawyer. Um, and I know that art also helps fight depression. Creating art is important in that field as well for both health and, and making you happier. Art makes kids do better in schools. Curriculums that have art, higher test scores, better graduation rates. So if art makes you happier, art makes you smarter, then art, art just makes you better. And so I do challenge all of you to include a little bit of art in your lives. Create a little bit. I'm not saying you need to build a 20-foot dinosaur. But a little dueling will just make you a happier person. And that's my message. Art is not optional. So, I do want to talk about a new project. Well, it's not that new. I've been doing it for a little while. This is Hugman. You see, Hugman's about 15 inches tall. And I leave him around New York City. He grabs onto trees and bicycle racks and so forth. It's my form of street art. I wanted to have my own Lego graffiti and this is what I came up with, Hug Man. And so as you can see, people stop, they smile, they take pictures. Um, it's New York, so they last a good hour. <laughs> um. So I, I may not entirely explain why I'm here, uh, other than being invited by our gracious hosts, I, I wanted to do something with you guys. And so I have brought 100,000 Lego bricks onto this ship. <laughs> and we're going to present those in the Game Center, the conference room, the Game Center area. And uh, I encourage you all to participate, build. I will be down there from time to time to check out the progress. Uh, I'll definitely be there uh, if you hold the. Uh, building hours, if you will, from 11 to 12 tomorrow for sure, and I'll announce further building hours as uh, to be determined. Um, so I encourage you to build whatever you want, but if, if we were to have a theme, I thought it'd be fun to kind of think about, well, Jonathan Colton, for example. He's got some fun songs, and there's some fun titles. So what if we were to interpret those titles in Lego? For example... <laughs> We could have fancy pants. <laughs> kind of fun. And then over here, I was thinking we would do something like this. Skull crushing <laughs> And I encourage you to add to it as much as possible. Uh, join in. There's very few wolves, as you can see. <laughs> so please. You notice also, I put Skull Crusher Mountain um, on an island. Uh, we are at sea, and um, I, I, I don't know if that's canon. Uh, so if we could just change the song to Welcome to my secret lair on Skull Crusher Mountain Island, I think this would, be, this would work. Jonathan, are you here? Could you help me unveil this next one? There you are. There you are. So, um, I'm going to need a little help. These are hollow, incidentally. Uh, I just want you to stand here. Okay. 
That's all I need. Exactly. Yeah, so I think we'll move these down to the Game Room Conference Center so you can all spend time with Rick Jonathan. <laughs> Anyways. I will leave Huckman somewhere on this ship, so keep an eye out for him. Thank you very much. Nathan Sawaya, ladies and gentlemen. I can't, uh, oh, thank you. I don't even, uh, uh, I don't even know what to say. This is the craziest thing that has ever happened to me. Uh, Oh, there he goes! There he goes! <laughs> this is very cool, too. Uh, okay. I'm a little distracted by the life-size <laughs> Lego sculpture of me. Uh, thank you, Nathan. That was amazing. Uh, and I, I encourage you, if you get a chance... <laughs> if you get a chance... If you get a chance to go and see Nathan's stuff, uh, if you're in New York, uh, it's the, Dis the Discovery Center in Times Square. It's truly amazing to see this stuff up close, as you'll see when this is in the game room, the, the, the way, uh, I, I don't know, the way it changes and the shadows of the individual bricks. It's just very, it's very, very cool to see them up close. Uh, and they are, they just seem like they don't, uh, they shouldn't exist in the world, and yet there they are. <laughs>